Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Jake's Take with Jacob Aliashar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Aliashar, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Now, before we get started today, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a, a like and subscribe. If you're listening to this on any of our audio podcast platforms, please give us a five-star review and please also subscribe. I really appreciate it. I am so excited, guys, because my guest today is an actor who's appeared in movies such as A Score to Settled, A Facebook Romance, and A Day to Die. He's also, he was also the host of the Middle East version of The Voice, NBC The Voice, and as of this recording, he has... 1.7 million Instagram, Instagram followers. I want to say that number again. 1.7 million Instagram followers. Please help me welcome the talented Muhammad Kareem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm so excited to be here with you. Uh, uh, looking forward to, to a great uh, uh, interview here with you, man, and with all your audience. Awesome. All right, Muhammad, let's get started. So when did you get interested in acting? How did the passion evolve into desire to pursue a career in the recording industry it was um actually it was like a, a in a really early stage i was uh, back in school and i was doing all these uh plays in school but i think it all started when i um i sort of like got fascinated with with hollywood and um my 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 happiness was like in the weekends i go to uh, movie theaters and all that and um so that was my passion when i was little and just started, you know, when uh, when I when I was like doing my school, when I got in, into medical school, I I, I I was doing the same thing at the same time. You know, I was doing my acting and I was doing uh, uh, being a student as well. So it just started from early age and I knew it that, that this is my passion, being an actor. Well, I'm glad that you did that. And that must have been a very difficult decision going from medical school to acting full time. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. It wasn't an easy ride, to be honest with you. I have to be honest. Um, it was tough. And uh, the fact that you want to pursue your dream, you want to pursue what you love, it's not an easy thing. You need to uh, give up a lot of things. You need to dedicate yourself. Um, being a medical school student and then becoming a doctor, it's not an easy thing to pursue any other sort of like uh, work beside that, right? Because it's like a full-time job. Um, but because I was really in love with my passion so much in acting, I really wanted to do, uh, wanted to, to make it out, you know, like sort of like, how can I make this work out? Right. So the only thing is to be dedicated and to find a way and find a time to do what you love, which is acting for me. So I was like literally coming out from hospitals and working with patients to the studio it felt sort of like awkward, but you know, at the beginning, like you're dealing with patients and all that, and all of a sudden you're like in a movie set. So it took a while for me to sort of like understand, like how can I do both? But I'm I'm just grateful that you know, you know, uh, it worked out. Uh, it the, the toughest part was how can like which one is gonna take you know sort of like the you know uh, take over, um, which took a little bit while because I was. You know, um, as much as I love acting, also I loved uh, being a doctor. But I finally took a decision of just focusing mainly on the my passion, which is acting. And I'm so glad that I took that decision and, uh, you know, moved to Hollywood. Um, you know, I started doing my, my acting uh, uh, films and stuff. And I, you know, I'm really excited here now. We're celebrating uh, my new feature film, I Did I Die. And we'll be talking about a day to die in a second. So let's get first get started with some of the role. Who were some of the role models that you saw in the acting world, and how, and why did it make an impact on you? For sure, one of them is um, Denzel Washington. I love him. I love his work. I I respect him as an actor, as an artist. Um, also, Al Pacino. Um, also, I love the work for um, uh, Matthew McConaughey. I also, um, uh, there's just like a lot of talented people out there that I, I, I one of them actually, I grew up on um, Bruce Willis action feature films, like a, uh, Die Hard and stuff. Uh, this is one, one of the, the things that I really love being, you know, opposite him in this feature film is the fact that I grew up watching his films and um, now I'm, I, I get to play uh, one of the leads in the film with him. It felt really great. Um, 
had an amazing time uh, doing my scenes with Bruce, actually. That must be incredible. So why did, why did a day to die interest you? So, because not just getting a chance to work with Bruce Willis, but also Frank Thillow. So why did that, this film, why do you want an audition for this film? Definitely. I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, number one for me, I think it's the big win for me here in this feature is it's a uh, non-stereotypical sort of role for me. So I get to play uh, Detective um, uh, Reynolds, who reports to his uh, chief of police, who's uh, Alston Bruce Willis. Um, the fact he's, he's, you know, implementing the law, he wants to do the right thing. There are a lot of challenges in there because th the fact that he wants to do the right thing all the time, he doesn't fear anything, he doesn't care if this is gonna piss off his boss, whatever, but he wants always to bring justice until you know he had his gut feeling that there's something's off there's something doesn't feel right and he's 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 after his you know gut feeling and he kept doing and doing what he really believed in nobody uh, listened to him nobody believed on what he was like concerned about all these um um people that were under his custody uh a lot of time they get kidnapped or disappear or killed or whatever so he kept like digging deep into it and seeing what's going on he wants to get the you know um he felt like something's off with his boss and so until you know he he had a message that if you feel something and you believe in something you just have to go for it and i think i relate to that in real life um until he bring down the big boss and bring down the bad you know bad guy no spoiler who's going to be the bad guy in this film. But um, I think um, one of the main things is the non stereotypical sort of like role. Also, the message that has it's not one of these action straight up action films. It's it has a lot of messages in the film. There's a really great stories in the film. So people not just going to enjoy the action scenes, they're going to enjoy the actual film itself and the story. Awesome. And so what were some of the lessons that you learned from Bruce Willis and from the entire and from the production crew as you've worked as you worked on A Day to Die? And how will you incorporate those lessons into the next chapter of your career? Definitely. You know, every time you you work in a feature or you work in, in, in you know, um, TV or you work in one of the, your gigs, definitely you, you, you gain a lot of experience. You take it and then you put it in, on, on the upcoming project. For me, coming up from all these feature films that I've been doing um, in the Middle East, uh, especially in Egypt, uh, the TV series and all the the works that you mentioned at the beginning, uh, definitely gain a lot of experience, and I'm using it here now. Um, when I, you know, started working in Hollywood, um, my main thing was, you know, to make sure that I tried as much as possible to do different genres, do different roles stay away as much as possible from all these uh, stereotype roles that I don't really want to be part of as much as possible. Uh, the fact that my first two feature films, uh, Score to Settle and A Day to Die, the both of them uh, kind of um, served my purpose and served, you know, my hope in order to break through Hollywood in, 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 in really such great roles. Um, I think that's uh, was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to be part of these projects. Uh, the fact that they're these kind of roles as a beginning for me here in Hollywood, I think that that was pretty cool. I think that's awesome. And I like, I would love to learn more of the challenges that you face breaking into the inter entertainment industry. And how did you overcome those obstacles? Um, it's, it's the obstacles that everybody that, you know, facing in general, breaking through here in Hollywood, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. And in order to prove yourself and the fact that you can, um, be able to, uh, be fortunate enough to, uh, do certain roles that, you know, back in the days they weren't really available for you and what are, um, what are easy to, to do these kind of roles, I think. It's getting there and there. I think it's, I think right now Hollywood started to open up a little bit more, which is a good thing. We really wish, you know, they can be more and more, but I think as a start is not bad. The fact that 2019, we were like four uh, actors originally from Egypt uh, broke through Hollywood. I think Rami Malik is the biggest example. 
was we were all proud of, you know, won an Oscar, Rami Youssef, Mina Masood for Aladdin, um, and me with Escort to Settle, I think uh, started to break that sort of like, uh, what do you call it, like mold or, or, you know, like a box, whatever you want to call it. But I think that's a good sign that started to be a little bit of diversity here. Um, I think we're, we're, we're all looking forward to see more of that. I'm happy for you and congratulations. That's just amazing. Thank you. All right. So let's get started. Now, before all the movies, you were actually part of the big, one of the biggest reality TV franchises in the world, which was The Voice and which was NBC, The Voice, The Voice of Middle East for version. So what were some of the lessons that about your time as a host and like, how's it different between acting versus following a script and the teleprompter and working with contestants and celebrities? It's, it's a, for me, I just take it as another role. Like it's, it's just a, a new project with another role. My role there was an amazing role because I get to help people achieve their dreams, their hopes, help them out, cheer them up. Uh, the fact that I get contestants from 20 different countries, um, you know, you get people from all over the, that part of the region, um, you get to share their moments, see what they were like, their hard times, how they, they went through all these difficult times until they reached to that point to participate in this, uh, such show, uh, in order to prove themselves, they want to win. And I think there is a huge burden here on, on the host more than anybody else, because he gets to know all these stories before they come up the stage and perform. So you're kind of like in their side, they want, you know, you want the judges to turn around and help them out, you know, like to pick them, right? Because you're the one who heard all these stories and the, you know, what they went through and what like the, 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 the hard stuff they went through and their stories and, you know, hear all these kind of, you know, um, very sort of touchy story about like a, their mom or their dad or you know, the, they passed away, but they wanted them to witness their success or like, um, you know, their, her sister couldn't make it, but, you know, um, into, you know, singing, but now she, they're, they're like, kind of like see themselves into their, you know, like and try to help them out and all that. So you get to live in all these kind of different stories around you. I think I was fortunate to be part of this. That's incredible because it must've been and like, this is like the first time I'm talking with someone that's affiliated as a host for the, sh for a show. And it must be difficult when like they were doing battle rounds and knockout in the knockouts and live when they're like whittling people left and right down. It must, it must've been tough to say goodbye to them. Of course, especially when you spend some more time and they spend some weeks, maybe months, uh, with them, you know, you, you kind of like get to know them more and you spend more time. It's, it, it gets harder and harder seeing them, you know, leaving the show. Um, so I think you, you come up with the best thing is you come up with great friendship. You come up with, you know, great people that you meet. So that's what you, um, you, you went out of the whole thing. It's and the experience for sure. That's amazing. So what's more amazing is I just saw in Hollywood reporter that you are teaming up with dark castle entertainment to film a original idea of yours called the Book of Chaos. So what was that story like about having that idea and then finally transforming it into a film? Well, I'm, I'm really excited for this project, to be honest with you. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's pretty hard to, you get the chance to do one of your, your dream sort of projects. And this is one of them, you know, you get to work and, and do your gig, you know, you go, you know, get audition here and there, start, you know, booking roles and stuff. But at the same time, you have your own sort of project that you really wish and you were really hoped for, you know, the right time with the right partners to partner up and, and do a great project. And I think one of the projects that I, I, I want to do was was uh, this feature film. Um, you know, it's untitled uh, for now. Uh, it's a horror film. It takes place between, um, you know, it takes place in the U.S. and then parts uh, uh, in Egypt which I'm, I'm really happy to, to share this with, with the whole world, get to show them the, the right places, because most of the films that you, you, you watch that talks about Egypt or Asian Egyptian civilizations or like the pyramids and all that, uh, like 
hundred percent. I don't want to say ninety nine percent, but mo- most probably the 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 they didn't shoot those scenes in in Egypt. So I get to um, uh, to show them the real deal and the real locations, and um, you know, it's about an Egyptologist. So I think it's a it's a it's a really cool film. And um, it's going to be really great. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're in development stage right now with the script, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can get into it um, really soon. Um, I'm happy with everything happening, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, share it out with the, with the whole world. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you because that sounds interesting. And I'm not a horror film because I get very scared very easily. <laughs> but I'll check out your stuff. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So let's talk social media. 1.7 million Instagram followers. So do you have any advice on getting that kind of strong following when it becomes the pictures versus like these hashtags? Well, you know, I, I wish I was act. I'm not really active, though. I wish I was active more. I would have been more than that. But um, I'm focusing uh, on on my work and my, you know, my daily thing. Like um, I see a lot of other people that what they do is like they they share every moment. And uh, if you if, if people want to really grow more, they should you know be engaged more. They should uh, do you know from you know beginning of the day what they do, exercising whatever, and then they get to work and all that. You can definitely be a lot of things interesting that you can sh- you know share with the whole world and with the system right now what's happening with like with the real uh uh clips that sh- you know can spread out everywhere um but i think just be you and be yourself and uh you know be show some love sh- try to show like some benefits for people i honestly try as much as possible to share with the world like what can benefit them um you know for, for now I'm, I'm sharing my news i'm sharing you know um my projects uh my my travel plans and stuff like that uh, but ma- main thing here is to be able to uh, keep them posted on all the the work that i'm doing uh for like lately i was posting about the the premiere that we had for the uh a day to die in new york which was amazing um so I get to, you know, you know, listen, social media, I think, still has its own sort of like bright side, uh, of course, with like all the negativities and everything that you can get. But I always I'm an optimist guy. So I always like think positive and see what, what like the positive thing that you can gain out of it. And this is my my way of doing a thing in life. So I would just suggest that be you and be yourself and just um Enjoy it. Awesome. So one of my final, we got to start winding down our conversation. Here. So one of my final questions is, if you have the opportunity to meet with actors who are looking to break into the entertainment industry, what advice would you share with them? Um, just focus. Just be, you know, just try it as much as possible to focus on what exactly. You got to choose your battle, man. You have to be focused on what you really love. Um, I don't recommend that you go all in because it's such a uh, really risky industry. But um, I would say definitely before you get into it, you need to make sure that as much as possible, be sort of like support, like be financially sort of like a little bit stable because it takes a while, sometimes years in order to do what you want or start getting, you know, sort of additions and stuff like that or even book roles. So at least you need to support yourself, be able to, because sometimes you can end up where like for months and maybe years not working, right? So you need to make sure that you can at least support yourself. And if anybody got the, the chance to get some degree or education, that would be helpful too, because I'm pretty sure whatever you get, you know, um, any kind of education, any kind of degree, it definitely is going to help you out. Awesome. So last question, where can I find your filmography and where can I connect with you? Uh, definitely uh, through Instagram, um, um, MK underscore Mohamed Karim, M-O-H-A-M-E-D-K-A-R-I-M. And um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Mo Karim Star, and on Facebook page, Mo Karim Official. And you got my emails on uh, on the Instagram handle. So 
everybody can uh, would love to uh, always uh, reply him back, especially through uh, the Instagram. So would love to um, uh, meet my fans and always reply back to them. Awesome. So guys, if you missed an episode of the Jake Stick with Jacob Elliott Show podcast, visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and Spreaker. It's Jacob Elyashar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Once again, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, same as last time. J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Muhammad, jakes-take.com, the podcast, the blog that started it all. is celebrating 11 years this August. 11. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Amen. man. You deserve it. Congrats. 11 years. Wow. Wow. It is. The time The time has flown by so much. So if you want to see more of my articles, my film reviews, and po- all my past interviews, head over to jakesashake.com. Once again, jakesashake.com. Now, if you're financially able to, please consider heading to PayPal to help keep jakesashake.com, my platform, up and running. I've been, I'm the one man the man on the street, the one-man band that does everything. So it would be great to have your financial support. If not, I totally understand. A great alternative is subscribing to our social media channels and to the podcast. Mohammed, thank you so much for this conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it and uh, uh, look forward to meeting you again. Thank you so much. Absolutely, guys. And thank you so much for taking time in your schedule to watch or to listen. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Bye. Bye.